How would you describe sort of the current state of the PV industry? Uh, well, I think the PV industry is uh, obviously a significant global industry that's coming into uh, really full scale now. And the current state of affairs is a bit of a uh, feeling is growing pains. Um, there was a two, three year growth spurt, which uh, by any other industry standard was phenomenal growth. And there's a digestion going on, and I think a bit of consolidation, and obviously the economic uh, downturn globally, and the fall in commodity energy prices, this has had a, an effect for sure on the industry, but superimposed on an industry that needed to slow down, catch its breath, and consolidate a bit. So in some ways it might be a positive thing. That I like think so. I, I, I'm glad you asked me that. because. In the long term, that breather is important for an industry to uh, gain its feet again and prepare for further growth and frankly for the strong to survive and uh, the weaker perhaps to be weeded out. And I've been involved with so many emerging technology industries that that is a healthy uh, filter, painful when you're going through it, but looking back it's actually healthy for the industry. And what are your thoughts heading into sort of 2010? Because it's been a tricky year, say first nine months of this year, but there are some pretty positive signs. Oh, very, very positive. I mean, generally speaking, I mean, we have uh, the largest economies of Europe that are uh, in growth again, Germany and France. Obviously, the EU uh, generally is slightly in growth. There are still nations in recession, but the leading economies of Europe are back in a growth uh, mode. The United States, uh, as of third quarter, uh, it looks as if our recession, the worst since the Great Depression, is behind us. Uh, and of course, China and India continue to grow and now are accelerating their growth. So all in all, the macro trends are positive. For the solar industry, there's still some regress. Uh, there's this consolidation going on, there's perhaps some overcapacity, so there's falling prices, margins are still shrinking, perhaps now stabilizing. But the outlook for Q3 generally is favorable on a global basis and specific to PV. By the fourth quarter, I think one will see the industry uh, in an upturn so we'll even finish 09 on a positive note going into, I think, a very positive 010 for the industry. And what are your plans then for, for next year in terms of growth? What are you, what are you sort of setting well, up? For Canarca, you know, we're still a very young company. Uh, we just announced commercial availability of our first product. So when you have essentially zero product revenue, everything looks up to you, right? So we've not had to consolidate, we've not had a downturn, we have not had layoffs, none of this. So we've actually been growing through this period, adding uh, selectively, but adding to our staff, scientific and business. And we've been scaling up our technology now for full mass production. We have a, a very large uh, manufacturing plant in Massachusetts. And with time, we'll replicate that manufacturing capability in Asia, Pacific Rim, as well as in Europe. But uh, so for us, uh, this is an exciting time. We're launching our product and our customers are making products with our power plastic films. And every dollar of revenue is a dollar more than we earned uh, in the previous year. So it's all positive for us. So what, can you explain to people what, what your technology actually is, right? what it, where it's different from other people? Well, I'll, I'll try to do this simply. It's, it's, uh, the underlying technology was the subject of the Nobel Prize in chemistry in the year 2000, awarded to my co-founder, our chief scientist. And in lay terms, what we do is we convert light to electricity by a plastic. And this plastic is made from the element carbon, whereas most of solar, the predominance of solar is silicon-based in a variety of forms. Our technology is based on the element carbon, which coincidentally is in the same column of the periodic chart as silicon, just above silicon. 
even more abundant and lower cost than silicon. So ours is a new thin film technology. It's deemed organic because there are no heavy metals, there are no transitional materials. We only use the principles of organic chemistry to make our materials. And these are polymers, plastics that convert light to electricity. And then, of course, we build a cell or we build a multi-layer device with these materials, and they are photovoltaic. And so our technology is produced roll to roll. It's an organic material, sustainable. It's a printed manufacturing process made continuously roll to roll, large surface area, low cost, low energy, low carbon, and in fact can be made in different colors and different forms. So it's a revolutionary new material that we've been working on now for the last six years and we have 60 more years of innovation to bring, but our first product generation we launched this week and in fact announced it here at the European PV Conference. And we see that your technology is being applied very much in the consumer, well, certainly one aspect of it, in the consumer market with your bags, your solar bags. Can you explain those? Well, we, we have four general market segments that we're uh, targeting as our initial go-to-market given that our technology is not yet uh, completely developed. So we are not in the power utility market. And we are not initially focusing on the rooftop market. Now, albeit these are very, very large segments of the solar market, but our technology uh, for its first generation will be targeted at four markets. Uh, powering microelectronics, like wireless sensors and detectors, RFID tags, and so forth for security, for safety, for tracking, monitoring. Second segment is portable electronics, consumer products. Uh, everything we use is powered by batteries. We're wholly dependent upon batteries. And so we want to integrate our power plastics in uh, those devices, but also our bags and our backpacks. And everything we carry can have power plastic integrated in it and thus continue to charge all of the electronics that we're wholly dependent upon. Third is off-grid applications in the developing world, for example, powering LED lights, and what I call urban architecture, street architecture in the developed world. So, for example, the new bus shelter in San Francisco. Bus shelters, uh, lighting, signage, awnings, what I call street architecture, urban architecture. And then the fourth segment, very importantly, is building integrated PV. But there, for certain reasons, uh, where our performance is very competitive to other thin film and other silicon technologies, we're focusing on the windows, the fenestration, the curtain walls, because our technology has competitive performance to other competing technologies in vertical orientation and in off-angle low light, which is basically a window. So we're not going to be uh, installing on the rooftop probably not for another year or two, and focusing on curtain walls, windows, as they say, and what is called uh, street architecture. So I guess finally, where, where do you see the biggest gains coming from in the next sort of year or two? From Canarca or just generally in the industry? Uh, for Canarca, our focus, since we have mass production, we've invented and continue to invent new materials, our principal focus is to get to higher and higher efficiency in a simple single junction multi-layer device that we can make environmentally responsible, sustainable, recyclable, low carbon, simple architecture and get the efficiency as high to 10 percent and eventually above 10 percent whereas today we're at a lower efficiency. So number one priority is to get the efficiency higher which will open up more of the market for us and the other is better packaging for longer life. On glass, on rigid plastic, we get very long life. But in a flexible package, our initial product is a three to five year life product. We'd like that to be a 10 to 15 year product. And we've now, with our partners, have identified barrier films that can package and protect as long as 10 to 15 years. So that will be our focus for our next generation product.